Before we can actually get started programming, we need to understand a little bit more about how our computer works. In particular, we want to focus on how does a computer run a program? Or even more specifically, how does a computer run a Python program? Because in computer science, there's two different types of programming languages. You have interpreted programming languages, and you have compiled programming languages. Interpreted programming languages are usually easier to implement because of one simple fact, and that's because writing a compiler that works well is really hard to do, actually. Not only that, but there's no need to run a compilation stage, which can allow you to execute code on the fly. Compiled languages, uh, in comparison, they're faster in performance because the compiler uh, converts your program into the native uh, code on the target machine, uh, which makes it faster. So an interpreted language is a high-level programming language that is run and executed by an interpreter. A compiled language, on, uh, on the other hand, is a high-level programming language whose code is first converted to machine code by a compiler, and from there, that uh, returned machine code is then passed into an executor, which is just another program for running the code. So Python is an interpreted programming language. An example of a compiled programming language would be uh, something such as Java. We need to actually get the Python interpreter on our computer to actually run our code because the Python interpreter is basically the, the instructions that tell your computer how to read, interpret, and act based on the Python program because a program is basically just a step-by-step -step list of instructions that tell the computer how to behave. So in order to actually understand those steps, the computer kind of needs to be able to read Python, and the interpreter allows the computer to do just that. So to get your local development environment set up, there's two steps we have to, we have to complete. The first being we actually have to install the Python interpreter. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go to the Python website, which can be accessed at python.org forward slash download, and we want to use version 3.4.3. We're going to use this just to keep it consistent with the course. You can download the version that's best suited for your computer's operating system, and then just run through the installation wizard, and Python will install itself. You don't really have to do anything. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So again, it's python.org forward slash downloads. And we're just going to locate version 3.4.3, which is right here. So just click on it and then scroll all the way down, and we want to find the version that's best suited for our computer. So I'm on a Mac 64-bit computer, so I'm going to download this installer. And the installer is right here, I'll open this. And I'm just going to run through the installer really quickly. I'm going to hit Agree, and we're going to install this right onto my computer, and install. Okay, so now that Python is installed, we need an actual editor to write code in. Now, I chose to use PyCharm for this course, number one, because it's free, and two, it's professional grade. Meaning, companies, technology companies, actually use this application and rely on it to build the cool apps that they make. So you can download this for free at jetbrains.com forward slash PyCharm. And we'll go there now. Again, it's jetbrains.com forward slash PyCharm. And then just go ahead and hit download now. And you can just go to community. We don't need the professional. And then it's downloading. Okay, so you can see that PyCharm has downloaded successfully. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this application to my applications folder. Alrighty, so now PyCharm is actually in our application, so we can go ahead and eject that. Alright, and it's right over here. I'm just going to move this over here, and I'm going to go ahead and open it. 
Okay, so chances are you don't have a prior configuration of PyCharm, so we're just going to go ahead and hit Do Not Import Settings. Okay, and this is just the one-time initial configuration. So I like to use the dark theme, so I'm just going to change that. Okay, and it's just going to reboot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit Create New Project. And up here, where we have Location, this is where we're going to name our project. So I'm going to just call this CSPY, Computer Science Python. In Interpreter, I have multiple versions of Python on my computer, but for this course, I want to use version 3.4. So I'm just going to click this one. And I'm going to hit Create. We'll just let it finish what it's doing. Okay, so now Python is ready to be used in PyCharm. So over here we have on the left our file browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new Python file. I'm just going to call this main.py. And a thing to note, all Python files end in this .py file extension. That's how your computer identifies a Python file. So we're just going to hit enter. And then over here, this is our text editor. This is where we can actually write our code. So I'm just going to write out one line of code. You don't need to understand how this works. I'm going to just save. I'm going to go up to run. And then I'm going to click run again. And I'm going to hit edit configurations. So I have this one in here. Yours will probably be blank. You want to put the file path of the Python file you want to run. And just hit run, and then you see it outputs down here. So that's PyCharm in a nutshell. We're going to be playing around with this a lot more throughout.